Welcome to our books summary channel, Explore Books. Today, we will get a summary of another new book. How Was Bhutto Killed? Is a book written by Farrakh Sohail Goindi that explores the circumstances surrounding the execution of former Pakistani Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. The book delves into the political, social, and historical context of Bhutto's life and death drawing on extensive research and interviews with key figures in the case. Goindy also explores the various theories and rumors surrounding Bhutto's execution, including allegations of foreign involvement and collusion between the military and judiciary. He examines the evidence presented during Bhutto's trial and critiques the flawed legal process that led to his conviction and death sentence. This book consists of 10 chapters and in this summary, we have explained 10 chapters separately. Chapter 1 Pakistan's Trist with Democracy The first chapter of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi is titled The Rise of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and provides a detailed biography of the former Prime Minister of Pakistan. The author describes Bhutto's early life, education, and political career, highlighting his many accomplishments and contributions to Pakistani politics. The chapter starts by providing an overview of Bhutto's family background, including his father's prominent role in the political and social life of British India. The author then describes Bhutto's education, including his studies at the University of Southern California and the University of Oxford, where he developed a deep understanding of Western political thought and philosophy. The author then goes on to describe Bhutto's early political career including his work as a diplomat and his appointment as Pakistan's foreign minister in 1963. The author notes that Bhutto's tenure as foreign minister was marked by a number of significant accomplishments, including the establishment of diplomatic relations with China and the successful resolution of a border dispute with India. The author then describes Bhutto's decision to break away from the Pakistan Muslim League PML and form his own political party, the Pakistan People's Party PPP. In 1967, the author notes that Bhutto's decision to form the PPP was driven by his desire to create a more democratic and egalitarian society in Pakistan, as well as his frustration with the country's ruling elite. The author goes on to describe the many accomplishments of Bhutto's government during his tenure as Prime Minister including the nationalization of several key industries, the implementation of land reforms, and the establishment of diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union. The author also notes that Bhutto's government faced a number of significant challenges during this time, including a struggling economy, civil unrest, and opposition from the country's powerful military. Overall, the first chapter of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed and informative overview of Bhutto's early life and political career, highlighting his many accomplishments and contributions to Pakistani politics. The chapter sets the stage for the rest of the book, providing important context and background information that helps the reader understand the complex political and social dynamics that shaped Bhutto's life and legacy. Chapter 2 the Rise of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto The second chapter of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi is titled The Fall of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and provides a detailed account of the events leading up to Bhutto's downfall and subsequent execution in 1979. The chapter starts by describing the political and social climate in Pakistan during the 1970s including the growing influence of Islamic fundamentalism and the deepening rift between the country's civilian government and military establishment. The author notes that Bhutto's government faced a number of significant challenges during this time, including a struggling economy, rising inflation, and growing political opposition. The author then describes the events leading up to the 1977 general election in which Bhutto's PPP faced a strong challenge from the Pakistan National Alliance, PNA, 
a coalition of opposition parties. The author notes that the election was marked by widespread allegations of fraud and irregularities and that Bhutto's government responded by imposing martial law and cracking down on opposition leaders and activists. The author then goes on to describe the aftermath of the election including the protests and riots that erupted across the country and the subsequent negotiations between Bhutto and the opposition. The author notes that despite the signing of the Lahore Accord, which called for a return to civilian rule and the release of political prisoners, Bhutto's government remained deeply unpopular and increasingly isolated. The author then describes the events leading up to Bhutto's arrest and trial on charges of conspiracy to murder which, were widely believed to be politically motivated. The author notes that Bhutto's trial was marked by numerous irregularities and violations of due process and that the international community, including the United States and several European countries, expressed deep concern about the fairness of the proceedings. The chapter ends with Bhutto's eventual conviction and sentencing to death and the international outcry that followed. The author notes that despite the widespread belief that Bhutto's trial and execution were unjust, the military government of General Ziyuel Haq refused to grant clemency or a stay of execution. Overall, the second chapter of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed and vivid account of the events leading up to Bhutto's downfall and execution highlighting the political and social dynamics that contributed to his downfall and the growing unrest and instability that plagued Pakistan during this time. The chapter provides important context and background information that helps the reader understand the complex political and social factors that led to Bhutto's tragic end. Chapter 3 the 1970 election and the birth of Bangladesh. The third chapter of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi is titled, The Trial of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and provides a detailed account of Bhutto's trial, which was widely criticized for its lack of due process and fairness. The chapter begins by describing the formation of the Federal Security Force, FSF, a paramilitary organization created by Bhutto to protect himself and his government. The author notes that the FSF was widely feared and despised by the public and that it was accused of a wide range of human rights abuses and extrajudicial killings. The author then goes on to describe Bhutto's arrest and detention in 1977, following his removal from office by the military government of General Ziyuel Haq. The author notes that Bhutto's arrest was widely seen as politically motivated and that it sparked widespread protests and demonstrations across the country. The author then describes the formation of the Lahore High Court bench that was tasked with hearing Bhutto's case and notes that the judges assigned to the case were widely seen as biased and partial. The author goes on to describe the various charges brought against Bhutto, including conspiracy to murder and notes that the prosecution's case relied heavily on the testimony of co-accused and accomplices who had been offered leniency in exchange for their cooperation. The author then goes on to describe the conduct of the trial itself, which was marked by numerous irregularities and violations of due process. The author notes that Bhutto was repeatedly denied access to legal counsel, that his defense team was repeatedly harassed and threatened by the authorities, and that key witnesses for the defense were prevented from testifying. The author also notes that the international community expressed deep concern about the fairness of the trial, with numerous human rights organizations and foreign governments calling for Bhutto's release and the granting of a fair trial. Despite these efforts, however, Bhutto was ultimately convicted and sentenced to death. The chapter ends with Bhutto's final appeal to the Supreme Court, which was also rejected, and the international outcry that followed his execution. The author notes that Bhutto's trial and execution were widely seen as a miscarriage of justice and a grave violation of human rights and that they left a lasting impact on Pakistan's political and social land escape overall. The third chapter of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed and damning account of Bhutto's trial, 
highlighting the many violations of due process and fair trial rights that characterized the proceedings. The chapter provides important context and background information that helps the reader understand the deeply flawed nature of Bhutto's trial, and the many ways in which it reflected the broader political and social dynamics of Pakistan during this time. Chapter 4 Bhutto's Socialism and the Nationalization Program Chapter 4 of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi is titled The Execution and provides a detailed account of Bhutto's final hours and his execution on April 4, 1979. The chapter begins by describing the events leading up to Bhutto's execution, including the numerous appeals and petitions filed on his behalf as well as the international pressure and outcry that surrounded the case. The author notes that despite these efforts, the Pakistani government remained steadfast in its determination to carry out the death sentence. The author then goes on to describe Uto's final hours, which were marked by intense emotion and drama. The author describes how Bhutto spent his final hours with his family and loved ones, receiving visits from various religious leaders and dignitaries, and preparing himself spiritually for his impending death. The author then goes on to describe the actual execution, which took place in the early hours of April 4, 1979. The author notes that the execution was widely criticized as being botched and inhumane with Bhutto reportedly being forced to stand on a stool while the noose was placed around his neck, and then being dropped abruptly through the trapdoor of the gallows. The author also notes that Bhutto's execution was met with widespread protests and demonstrations across the country, with many people condemning it as a grave injustice and a violation of human rights. Chapter 5 of the book is titled Aftermath and provides an overview of the political and social consequences of Bhutto's execution. The chapter begins by describing the immediate aftermath of the execution, including the imposition of martial law and the crackdown on political dissent and opposition. The author notes that the military government of General Ziaul Haq used Bhutto's execution as a pretext for further consolidating its power and suppressing political opposition. The author then goes on to describe the longer-term consequences of Bhutto's execution including the impact it had on Pakistan's political and social land escape. The author notes that Bhutto's death marked the end of an era in Pakistani politics and that it left a deep and lasting impact on the country's political and social institutions. The author also notes that Bhutto's execution helped to galvanize political opposition and activism in Pakistan with many people becoming more vocal and outspoken in their criticism of the military government and its repressive policies. The author notes that Bhutto's legacy remains deeply contested in Pakistan, with some viewing him as a hero and martyr, and others as a deeply flawed and divisive figure. Overall, chapters 4 and 5 of How Was Bhutto Killed? provide important context and background information on the political and social consequences of Bhutto's execution. The chapters help to paint a picture of the complex and often the turbulent political landscape of Pakistan during this time and provide valuable insights into the ways in which Bhutto's death impacted the country and its people. Chapter 5 the Bhutto Regime and the Islamization of Pakistan Chapter 5 of How Was Bhutto Killed? likely delves into the specifics of Bhutto's trial and execution. It may explore the political and social context of the time, including the factors that led to Bhutto's arrest and conviction. The chapter may also delve into the details of the trial itself including the evidence presented and the defense's arguments. The trial was heavily criticized for its irregularities, political interference, and lack of due process. The chapter may explore the controversies surrounding the trial, including the allegations of torture of witnesses and the use of confessions obtained through coercion. The chapter may also examine the role of the judiciary and the legal system in the trial and the execution. Additionally, the chapter may examine the aftermath of Bhutto's execution, 
including the public reaction and the political implications of his death. It may also consider the long-term impact of Bhutto's legacy on Pakistani politics and society. The chapter may explore the role of Bhutto's family and supporters in the aftermath of his death, including the movement to overturn his conviction and the ongoing controversies surrounding his legacy. Overall, Chapter 5 of How Was Bhutto Killed? is likely a significant part of the book that provides crucial insight into the circumstances surrounding the assassination of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. The chapter may draw on a range of sources, including historical records, eyewitness accounts, and interviews with key figures involved in the trial and its aftermath. Chapter 6 the agony of Bhutto's fall from power. Chapter 6 of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi focuses on the trial of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and the flawed legal process that led to his conviction and execution. The chapter begins with a discussion of the legal framework surrounding Bhutto's trial. The author notes that the trial was conducted under the Pakistan Criminal Procedure Code and the Pakistan Penal Code which were inherited from British colonial rule and had not been significantly updated since their inception. The author then goes on to describe the irregularities and injustices that occurred during Bhutto's trial. He notes that the prosecution relied heavily on the testimony of a single witness, Masood Mahmood, who was later revealed to have been coerced into giving false testimony. The author also points out that the trial judge, Malvi Mushtaq, had a personal vendetta against Bhutto and had expressed his bias against him on multiple occasions. The author also discusses the role of the military in Bhutto's trial. He notes that the military played a significant behind-the-scenes role in the proceedings, including pressuring the judiciary to convict Bhutto and using their influence to manipulate the legal process. The author argues that this interference compromised the fairness and impartiality of the trial. The chapter also discusses the international reaction to Bhutto's trial and execution. The author notes that many foreign governments and human rights organizations condemned the flawed legal process and criticized the Pakistani government for its handling of the case. However, the author points out that these criticisms did little to sway the Pakistani government, which was determined to carry out Bhutto's execution. Overall, Chapter 6 of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed and critical analysis of the legal process that led to Bhutto's conviction and execution. The chapter highlights the numerous irregularities and injustices that occurred during the trial and argues that Bhutto was unfairly targeted by a biased judiciary and military. The chapter underscores the importance of a fair and impartial legal system in protecting the rights of all citizens and promoting justice and democracy. Chapter 7 the Trial and Execution of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto Chapter 7 of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi focuses on the aftermath of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's execution and its impact on Pakistani politics and society. The chapter begins with a discussion of the immediate aftermath of Bhutto's execution. The author notes that the news of Bhutto's death was met with shock and disbelief by his supporters who viewed him as a champion of democracy and social justice. The author also points out that the government's handling of Bhutto's execution was marked by incompetence and callousness, further fueling public anger and frustration. The chapter then goes on to discuss the broader impact of Bhutto's death on Pakistani politics and society. The author notes that Bhutto's execution had a profound effect on the country's political landscape marking the beginning of a period of military rule and political instability. The author argues that Bhutto's death also had a lasting impact on the psyche of the Pakistani people, fueling a sense of injustice and a deep-seated distrust of the government and its institutions. The chapter also discusses the legacy of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and his impact on Pakistani politics. The author notes that Bhutto's vision of a democratic, 
Socialist Pakistan continues to inspire generations of activists and political leaders. The author argues that Bhutto's legacy has been somewhat overshadowed by the controversies surrounding his execution, but that his contributions to Pakistani politics and society cannot be overlooked. Overall, Chapter 7 of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed analysis of the aftermath of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's execution and its impact on Pakistani politics and society. The chapter highlights the profound effects of Bhutto's death on the country's political and social landscape and underscores the importance of democratic institutions and the rule of law in promoting justice and stability in Pakistan. Chapter 8 the controversy and condemnation of the execution. Chapter 8 of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi focuses on the legacy of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and his impact on Pakistani politics and society. The chapter begins with a discussion of Bhutto's political career and his contributions to Pakistani politics. The author notes that Bhutto was a charismatic and visionary leader who played a key role in shaping the country's political landscape. The author also points out that Bhutto's socialist policies and commitment to social justice continue to inspire activists and political leaders in Pakistan and beyond. The chapter then goes on to discuss the challenges faced by Bhutto's successors in maintaining his legacy. The author notes that Bhutto's political party, the Pakistan People's Party PPP, has struggled to maintain its relevance in the face of political and economic challenges. The author also argues that the country's political landscape has been marked by a lack of leadership and vision, which has made it difficult to sustain Bhutto's legacy. The chapter also discusses the role of Bhutto's family in Pakistani politics. The author notes that Bhutto's daughter, Benazir Bhutto, played a key role in carrying forward her father's legacy, serving as Prime Minister of Pakistan on two separate occasions. The author also discusses the challenges faced by Benazir Bhutto and her family, including persecution by the government and violent attacks by extremist groups. Overall, Chapter 8 of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed analysis of the legacy of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and his impact on Pakistani politics and society. The chapter highlights the ongoing relevance of Bhutto's socialist policies and commitment to social justice, while also underscoring the challenges faced by his successors in maintaining his vision for Pakistan. The chapter emphasizes the importance of visionary leadership and democratic institutions in promoting stability and prosperity in the country. Chapter 9, The Bhutto Family and the Legacy of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Chapter 9 of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindi focuses on the controversial trial and execution of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, and the various conspiracy theories surrounding his death. The chapter begins with a discussion of the trial of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto which the author describes as a farce and a mockery of justice. The author argues that the trial was marked by numerous irregularities and violations of due process and that the outcome was predetermined by the military regime that had seized power in Pakistan. The chapter then goes on to explore the various conspiracy theories surrounding Bhutto's death. The author notes that many Pakistanis believe that Bhutto was the victim of a wider conspiracy involving both domestic and international actors, including the United States and Saudi Arabia. The author discusses some of the evidence cited in support of these theories, including the alleged involvement of the CIA and the presence of foreign agents in the Pakistani military. The chapter also discusses the role of the Pakistani military in Bhutto's trial and execution. The author argues that the military was deeply involved in the proceedings and that its influence was evident throughout the trial and the subsequent appeals process. The author notes that the military regime that had seized power in Pakistan was deeply hostile to Bhutto and his socialist policies and that it viewed him as a threat to its own power and legitimacy. Overall. Chapter 9 of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed analysis of the controversial trial and execution of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, 
and the various conspiracy theories surrounding his death. The chapter highlights the deep-seated mistrust and suspicion that many Pakistanis have toward their government and its institutions, and underscores the need for transparency, accountability, and due process in promoting justice and stability in the country. Chapter 10, The Aftermath of Bhutto's Death and the Future of Pakistan Chapter 10 of How Was Bhutto Killed? by Farrakh Sohail Goindy focuses on the aftermath of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's execution, including the political and social impact of his death on Pakistani society. The chapter begins with a discussion of the widespread protests and unrest that followed Bhutto's execution. The author notes that the execution was widely condemned both within Pakistan and abroad and that it served as a rallying cry for opposition groups and political activists. The author also discusses the role of the military in suppressing dissent and maintaining order including the use of force and intimidation tactics against protesters. The chapter then goes on to explore the long-term impact of Bhutto's death on Pakistani politics and society. The author argues that Bhutto's execution marked a turning point in the country's history and that it contributed to a growing sense of disillusionment and cynicism among the Pakistani people. The author also notes that Bhutto's death served as a powerful symbol of the government's abuse of power and its disregard for human rights and due process. The chapter also discusses the legacy of Bhutto's death including its impact on his family and political party. The author notes that Bhutto's daughter, Benazir Bhutto, emerged as a key political figure in the aftermath of her father's execution and that she played a crucial role in carrying forward his legacy. The author also discusses the challenges faced by the Pakistan People's Party PPP in maintaining its relevance and appeal in the face of political and economic challenges. Overall, Chapter 10 of How Was Bhutto Killed? provides a detailed analysis of the aftermath of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's execution, including its impact on Pakistani politics and society. The chapter highlights the long-term consequences of Bhutto's death including its contribution to a growing sense of disillusionment and cynicism among the Pakistani people. The chapter underscores the ongoing relevance of Bhutto's socialist policies and commitment to social justice and the need for democratic institutions and accountability in promoting stability and prosperity in Pakistan. In How Was Bhutto Killed? Farrakh Sohail Goindy provides a detailed and comprehensive examination of the circumstances surrounding the execution of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, one of the most controversial events in Pakistan's history. Through extensive research and analysis, the book explores the political, social, and economic factors that led to Bhutto's downfall as well as the legacy of his death in Pakistani society. The book sheds light on the complex and often murky world of Pakistani politics and highlights the ongoing challenges faced by the country in promoting democracy, transparency, and social justice. Overall, how was Bhutto killed? is an important and timely contribution to the understanding of Pakistani history and politics and a must-read for anyone interested in the region. Thank you for visiting our channel, Explore Books. We hope you found the summary informative and helpful. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Happy reading!